Ladies and gentlemen, we've got a very special guest this evening coming up next. And uh, to introduce the special guest, uh, we would like to have Mr. Abraham Ahmed to do the honors. Uh, thank you so much, Everest. I know we are running uh, behind schedule, so we have to uh, move very fast. <clears throat> we'll try and do that. This is the last and perhaps the very crucial segment of the uh, day's conference, the awards. Uh, it's indeed uh, my great privilege and pleasure to uh, welcome this evening amongst, amongst us uh, Professor Deepak Patak. I don't think he needs any introduction, uh, although we had a long bio data of his to be read out. But I know most of you uh, know about him uh, and uh, that. But a little thing that I would like to uh, point out is that when uh, Professor Pat Patak uh, walked in uh, into the hotel and into the conference room, I've rarely seen the kind of uh, respect and the kind of <clears throat> attention that he got. Uh, many of us have been his, uh, his uh, old students. Many of us have gone to him for uh, his advice, his uh, consulting deep insights into the technology and business areas. So actually people stopped him, many of us stopped him to take his blessings. Some of us uh, stopped him for a selfie. Uh, a couple of them uh, wanted to say hello to him and perhaps seek some time to meet him later in the evening. So it's really a great uh, occasion for us in that sense also that we have with us uh, this evening, uh, Dr. Uh, Fatak. And I would now like to invite him on stage to deliver his keynote address, uh, followed by the awards function, Dr. Fatak. Thank you, Ibrahim, and good afternoon to all of you. Um, of course, before he said all those nice things, he reminded me that we are getting late and we need to wind up quickly. That was very nice because he knows my least count is one hour when I start talking. Uh, so I'll not bore you with any details. I think you have had enough technology gyan throughout the day. And what I was amazed was Mr. Sharma's uh, points that he mentioned. I did not realize he was talking about leadership. I thought he was simply talking about nice and happy life. As counting, I've been very fortunate. I think most of these apply to me except one, the principle of exclusion. I've been trying to exclude smoking from my life for many years. I've not yet succeeded. I finally promised my wife that when I'm 90 years old, I'll definitely give up. And 90 to 100 will live smoke-free life. Of course, a friend of mine recently advised me that the life expectancy in India has gone up. So who knows, I might live for 110 years, in which case I might smoke a little more. But other than that, uh, I think I won't bother you with a lengthy keynote, but I would like to remind you of just three important things which as CIOs and as the engine which will drive the wealth generation in this country in coming years and decades, I would like to suggest that keep your eyes and ears open for what is happening in future, which unfortunately is not going to take decades to happen, but could happen in years and sometimes in months. I saw somebody spoke of smack, so I won't repeat anything related to smack. I suppose you all understood the importance of uh, the, the, the social media, the mobility, the big data analytics and the cloud kind of things. But I would like to just remind you of the four V's once again, they might have been spoken about. But the information, and I'm not talking about data at all because data actually is intrinsically taking the form of information as you receive it. The old days where you got raw data and you did something, transformed it into information, etc., are going away fast. The volume of data that you'll be handling I mean, uh, those of you who recall the VLDB 96, which I had an uh, opportunity to handle when it was held in India, gigabyte was a, was a big size. We're not even talking about terabytes, we're not even talking about 
petabytes, talking about exabytes, and we are now talking about zettabytes. And that is happening faster than ever. So don't ever underestimate or neglect the volume of information that you will be handling soon enough. And I am not talking about just the volume of data that is generated through human interventions, which is data entry, data capture, or even scanned documents, or videos, audios, etc. I am talking about billions of devices which will get connected in the Internet of Things. And you will have stream of data coming in at such a vast volume. Much of it will have to be ignored and neglected. Some of it will have to be analyzed and used. That is a challenge. Velocity obviously will increase, and that's the other V. Variety of data that you will get. Increasingly, people are understanding that applications cannot be structured data-centric alone. Sadly, for many years, we distinguish between structured data and unstructured data as two different animals. We do not have that luxury anymore. Unstructured data cannot be handled in the conventional systematic way in which we handle structured data. So you have to begin by schema discovery data, somehow fit it into whatever structures you can put it, but handle everything holistically. The days of a transactional system which is independent, fast, rapid fire, and a data warehouse which is sitting at the back end, those days are gone over. You do not have that luxury. You have everything as a single end-to-end -end system. Your data warehouses, if at all you have constructed them, how to be live and dynamic and how to be responding in milliseconds and seconds. You do not have the luxury of running a query for two and a half days to get an answer. You may still have to do it for some of the queries, but you cannot build integrated applications going forward. And the veracity of data, which is the last V, which will cause more and more problems in coming years because earlier in the structured data type, you had so many things about validation, verification. You are pretty sure of cleanliness of the data that you have. That in spite of all that, you had useless data with you was a different story. But now, with the data coming in for any kind and any place and from any source, the veracity or the correctness or the adequacy of the data is going to be a big, big challenge going forward. Look for the ways to handle volume, therefore. Look for the ways to handle velocity. Look for the ways to handle variety. And look for the ways to handle veracity of information which is going to come to your systems in an unimaginable mountainous way. And as I said, you do not have a decade to build this system. You do not have probably even five years. Most of the CEOs would expect you to build these systems and make them operational as of yesterday evening. If that is not feasible, they will say at least today morning. So that is going to be the challenge. I have no answers. I am only raising questions and raising challenges, but I am sure you will live up to it. One bit about how the modern applications in the coming years will be constructed. I mean, forget the conventional style of building applications, forget even agile programming, the, some of the methodologies that you adopt. But I think architecturally, you would have API-centric applications. Larger and larger number of APIs will get standardized. I'm using API as a generic term. They could be web services, for example. But whatever you have, that will be the standard framework. Just like in the old PCs, you had a bus and you had a north bridge and a south bridge. You would have an API standard framework and you will have something which permits access not only to people but to the instruments in variety of different ways. And you'll have something which will connect to your large back. And all of this must happen very quick. I believe that is going to be the shape of things to come. That's all I wanted to say. I think your life is miserable as it is. I mean, I, I, have, I, I do not know of any CIO who lives as happily as Mr. Sharma described. I wish uh, they could. Uh, at least what Mr. Sharma has said is in spite of the problem that you have, you should take solace from the fact that whatever miserable life you may deal with or lead, you are doing an extremely important thing because without you, Believe me, this world cannot function. You and your likes are what is making the world tick. 
and what will make the world tick better and faster in coming years and decades. I have no doubt about it. So move with that confidence. Whatever you do, you are contributing and making a great difference. Continue to do so. God bless. Thank you. Thank you very much, Doctor. Could you please stay back with us on stage? I would like to invite Mr. Abraham Ahmed once again to hand over a memento to Dr. Patak. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. D.B. Patak. 